Hey there, Navy.5184, and welcome to my reaction to the season finale of Star Wars The Acolyte, aptly titled The Acolyte. So, as I stated in my last video, I am a little worried going into this because I just, the way things were placed, I just don't see how there can be a I'm not going to say a satisfying conclusion to the season because one of the things between um, last week and this week that kind of came to my mind as I was thinking about that because I'm thinking in the aspect of all loose ends being tied, all questions being answered and all that. But then I got to thinking that, you know, maybe we're not meant to have everything questioned because it's setting up for another season. That's something that I never really took into any consideration, even going into this. And I think the thing that kind of had me worried is, you know, I think of shows lately and it feels like it's been a lot of one and dones. Uh, most recently, what comes to mind is the TV show Willow, how they completely left it open for a second season in order for the actual story to get told, but then they ended up basically canceling that project and that's kind of a worry I have with this but at the same time if I'm a writer if I'm a series headliner I can't really think like that like if I want a story that's meant to be told through multiple seasons then I have to do it in that way if it doesn't happen then it doesn't happen so there's a part of me that maybe it would be wise if they didn't you know tie up everything one thing that i still am extremely worried about though is soul because now that we really know the full truth of what went down um brendock and it's clear that the jedi council does not know the full story they only know the full story of what was told to, um you know the version that was told in episode three where it was basically may who did everything you know that's the story they know so what's gonna happen because you got Vanestra who obviously is on her own you know I guess you could say not reconnaissance mission but on her own um, investigation and you know what is she gonna find out and what is she gonna do with the information that she gets I fully see a confrontation between her and Kamir I'm sticking with my theory that she was Kamir's Jedi Master and something went down something serious had to have gone down based on what we saw on Kamir's back I'm fully expecting a double turn between Osha and May May you know siding with Sol and Osha siding with Kamir and honestly I just don't know how it's all gonna go down I really fear that somehow though Soul's gonna die and the other thing that I have a theory is that Mother Coral is gonna somehow make an appearance because she just kind of up and disappeared but she was never seen after that like she wasn't with the coven when um, they were possessing Kelnaka so I I am dead certain she is still alive and is probably gonna play a role in this episode probably might even have something to do with Kamir the one thing I still want to know is how did May survive her fall? I, I, I mean, honestly, I feel like it had to have something to do with Coral somehow saving her. I feel like, you know, so. But the thing that worries me is getting all of that. And there's probably even much more because I'm also very curious. What is the story with Sol and why he so instantly felt so attached to Osha why was he so desperate you know to have her as a pupil but then again maybe it's just something as simple that he just desperately wanted a pattern on. I don't know which is actually kind of weird because if you think about it it's almost like him and uh Kamir are kind of uh I don't want to say uh, what's where I'm looking for parallels because Kamir wants a pupil you know but but based on the title of this episode, I think I'm going to finally get an idea of like what Acolyte is. And maybe Osha is going to be the Acolyte that Kamir is looking for. Bottom line is, I feel like that, you know, some someone's going to become the Acolyte in a way. But the other thing that's curious is Osha and May, you know, like what exactly is it with them in the terms that they're created? Because it makes... 
because the way episode 7 made it sound like is they were one being that or one consciousness that would split into two which to me really explains a lot about how their attitudes their behaviors and everything are such polar opposites so like i said it's just a lot of stuff that i that i personally want to see answered and explained i just don't know how they're gonna do it all in this episode i think it said it was like 48 minutes long or so but really if you take out all the credits and everything that feels like that's like a good you know five seven minutes you know between the credits um the previously on and all that so you take you know so let's just be generous and we'll subtract six minutes so you know so barely 40 minutes maybe i don't see how they can get all that done all that explained and have all these conflicts going on because i'm because with this being the finale there's got to be a battle of some sort you know whether it's vanessa versus kamir um another one with soul maybe he ends up fighting osha i'm kind of curious on where may stands in all this you know it just i just feel like there's too much that has left to happen and i don't see how they're gonna get all done in one episode however as i also stated before i am the type where i will you know i'll watch it see how they do it and i'm also going in kind of with a new mindset though because maybe like i said maybe some of the answers that i want are not meant to be had until season two if there is a season two so let's go ahead and uh, we shall get started with uh, the season finale the acolyte Hey there, thanks for stopping by and I appreciate you being here. If you enjoy the content and would like to give some extra support to the channel, feel free to check the description for various ways to do so. Some which will include an affiliate link to Dubby, uh, which you use, you get a 10% off your order. And also a link to my merch store, which is constantly running promotions and deals, as well as a link to my Patreon page, which you can get exclusive perks and content. Naturally, liking the video and leaving a comment helps as well. Thanks again and I will catch y'all down the road. Mm. What the? No! Uh, okay, what's going on? What is she seeing? Whoa, okay, hold up. What the hell is going on? Okay. Something about that didn't look right. Did you see her eyes? She had her hand outstretched. She was killing Sol. She had a saber in her hand. But she didn't use it. This is the future you saw. She can kill with no weapon. Oh, wait. Is that... Is he implying that she's using a force choke? The Jedi will meet us here. There is a vengeance on this planet. Now that you and those are both alive, I can prove it. Okay, I'm a little confused. Why would he need them both to be alive to prove there's a virgin? Don't they have records of their blood samples? Would that not be enough? You and Osha are not twins. You're a you weren't even curious to see what he had to say about that? I know I am. See you now, Jedi. <laughs> oh, well, now what? He's too big to follow us in here. Uh, I wouldn't put him past him to try. Dang, he is going all in, isn't he? Oh no! Wait a minute, he says he needed them both alive to prove there's a virgin. Now he's gonna shoot her down? What is Basil doing? Yeah, you might wanna run. I don't think Soul's gonna be very happy with you right now. But what happened? What did he do? Oh, he sabotaged the ship? Yourself, 
Okay, I'm not going to lie. That's going to mess me up a little bit. May using Pip, like, all nonchalantly like that was hers. I'm probably going to be mistaking Osha and May a lot. Also doesn't help that May is wearing Osha's outfit. Heck, with as many times I was getting them mixed up last episode. Senator. Apologies for my intrusion. Not at all. This must be urgent to wait for me here. I've heard some disturbing things, that you are running a murder investigation without reporting it to the Senate. I'm keeping this internal for the moment. I have the authority to take independent action if there's no larger threat. All the victims were Jedi. There are multiple victims? That's putting it lightly. Is the suspect a Jedi? Very close. Thank you for your concern. Okay, so it's sounding like she's not suspecting Sol as the killer of everybody that was on um, Kofar. I think the Jedi are a massive system of unchecked power, posing as a religion. A delusional cult that claims to control the uncontrollable. We don't control the Force. Not the Force. Your emotions. You project an image of goodness mm. and restraint. But it's only a matter of time before one of you snaps. And when, not if that happens... Who will be strong enough to stop him? Unfortunately, he nailed that one right on the head. I'm not going to lie. I don't like exactly how he worded everything and how resentful he was towards the Jedi and that. But if you look at the overall point, I mean, even starting with the prequels and look going through the Clone Wars, unfortunately, he ends up being proven right. Oh, sure. Should be trained. Would you ever consider? No. I'm not gonna lie, I was halfway expecting her to think about that a little longer. I'm not my sister. May made that deal without even thinking about it. What the? What is that? No freaking way! Was that Plagueis? I, I, I haven't read any of the EU stuff, any of the Plagueis stuff, but on various Star Wars pages, I've seen so many pictures of what he looked like and everything. They really brought Plagueis up in this piece. Whoa! That changes a lot. But I need to get a message to him. It's urgent. This is highly unorthodox, but I shall see what I can do. That voice sounded a little familiar, but I'm not going to go that far yet. Where is he? Randok. Gather as many knights as you can without raising alarm. You anticipate a confrontation? A uh, big time. Big time. They're already there. Well, this is going to be interesting. I will say this. I'm starting to wonder about my double turn theory because uh, clearly May is not on Soul's side. Uh-oh. So if May is not going to team with Soul, which honestly, I don't know why I kind of expected that with as angry as she was and basically him kind of confirming her right to be angry in a way, even though he feels completely justified in what he did, he, def he definitely... Uh, I would say overstepped a little bit and you know got too emotional with it but at the same time he didn't understand what Anisea was doing so he probably very easily misinterpreted but either way you know he's still pretty much in the wrong for that though I can't completely take blame off Anisea okay so Sol's in, May's in, I'm assuming Kamir's probably in, and now Osha's in. Ooh, I do have a feeling this is going to be a big battle royale. Thank you for leading me to her. Oh! We make a great team. Oh! Okay, here we go, here we go.
I swear, battles in closed areas always makes you so nervous, but as I'll say, I am just so nervous for Soul. I mean, in all honesty, I don't see how he survives this episode. I I hope he does, but I just don't see how. Oh, okay, I'm. Oh, okay, I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty darn cool. Yo, okay, hold up. All right, we gotta give some props on that shot. That was awesome. I really love that. Almost remind me of a uh, crouching tiger, hidden dragon. Get it, so okay, dude. I'm not like I don't think there's a fight in this season that I have not really liked. Whoa. Um. Soul on your six. Oh, uh, what's going on? Yo, okay, so, so <laughs> yo, okay, dude, I am loving these fights. Given that this is a finale, my uh, closing monologue will probably be a little more in depth, so I will explain why I love the fights so much in that. Soul killed our mother. I saw it with my own eyes. He's lied to you every day since you left our home. How could he teach you to control your negative emotions? He's the reason you have them. She's not completely wrong. But a lot of that had to do with your coven too. Whoa. -oh. Y'all. Yo, okay, that was a nice cut. I, you gotta give him credit for that. That was a nice cut. Uh oh, there's Vanestra. Now you pay for what you've done. Oh, they're not here for me. I, I have a feeling they are. At the very least, Vanestra is. Well, actually, now that I think about it, maybe she is here for Soul because when she learned Soul was on Brandock, that was her main reason for going, so. I take back what I said. Woo! I oh, I see what you're doing. He knows. Come on. Oh, nicely done, Soul. Oh. I didn't like that. Pause. Oh. Ooh. Is that the first time we've actually seen the Kyber Crystal? Soul, I know you're not supposed to, but I think you kind of have to in this case. Whoa. Okay, there's... Okay, what is her deal now? Good May. Feel your anger. This is the source of your pain. Journey will be complete. No. I want him to confess what he did. Oh, May is confusing the heck out of me so far. The High Council. Soul looks just as confused as I am. The Republic. I want him to pay for his crimes. I did the right thing. You went against the Jedi Council. I wouldn't call that the right thing. I don't know how your mother did it. How she did what? She created life. I believe she used the Force to create you and the Usha. Well, that certainly piqued his interest. You killed our mother. <laughs> yes. Well, at least he flat out admitted it this time, instead of trying to justify it. Why didn't you tell me? I did what I thought was best for you. I did everything. Because I love... What the? No! Wait a minute. That wasn't May she was seeing? 
That was her. Oh, Osha, come on. No, 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 no. No, Osha, not like that. Oh, look at that. Oh, no. Osha. Osha. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, no, he practically just gave her the okay to off him. No. I did not have Osha being the one who killed Soul on my Star Wars bingo card. Kamir seems very indifferent about it. But I want to know the crystal. That's what got me nervous. I saw that thing turning red. I see it being red. But... Yo. So that's how it works. So we got Plagueis. We saw a kyber crystal being bled. The introduction to Cortosis through this season. Holy cow. Uh oh, what's she saying? Oh you Oh he he put that helmet on real quick, didn't he? <laughs> oh you know she is not feeling good about this now. Come with me. I know a way out. Oh, so man, I hate that you went out like that. I mean, it's sad. It's like I was kind of expecting him to go this episode, but man, at Osha's hands? I'm not going to lie. If I would have had to put a top two on who would have done it, it would have been between Kamir and Vanestra. When I felt I got sucked into this core tunnel, come this way. So that's how she survived. She got sucked into... What? How? Well, actually, you know what? I'll hit on that point in the closing monologue. Because at first it didn't make sense, but now it actually does make a little more sense. But I'll explain it in the closing monologue. You should not have brought him here. Get the twins. Get them now. So Vanestra now knows what all happened. I sat here. Oh, wow. And I waited. I'm sorry I started that fire. If I can uh. find you, so can the Jedi. We'll explain what Soul did. They'll have to... Even after everything... You put your faith in the Jedi. I'll show when they find out how powerful you are. You will meet the same fate as our mother. Let my sister go and I will train with you. Are you sure? I can attempt to wipe her memory. Remove any trace of you or me. Wait. Ugh. <sighs> Man. And I would have loved a little more story with, between them, too. Definitely don't feel like we really got enough explaining them. All this one. Born as two. As above sits the stars. And below lies the... There it is. It's kind of a callback to episode six, though. Mira's was talking about when you lose everything, you're finally free. May was the last thing Osha had, and now she's practically gone. Don't move. Lay down any weapons that you have and surrender. Uh, she has no weapons. What did I do? She's asking that very honestly right now, my dude. Your last memory is from when you were eight years old. That man who killed your mother was a Jedi. 
16 years ago, four Jedi were stationed on the planet Brendok. There, they discovered a force cult of witches. A conflict ensued. There were many casualties. Afterwards, the Jedi conspired to keep their actions secret. Recently, wow. when the truth threatened to come out, a rogue Jedi named Soul. Whoa, wait a minute. To maintain the cover story. I'm sorry, my friend. An external review of the Jedi must begin immediately. While this is a terrible tragedy, it was the work of one flawed man. Well, oh, I mean, tech. And where is Master Soul now? He was found dead on Brandok. I believe he ended his own life. Mm. Soul made a mistake. A mistake he lived with mm, for so long, man. it twisted his mind. Wow. He justified every selfish step with the love he had for your sister. Does the name Osha mean anything? The Jedi have failed you. I am going to make this right. But I need your help. With what? I need you to help me find someone. Who? A pupil of mine. Before he turned to evil. That line sounded awfully familiar. Who was a pupil of mine until he turned to evil. You know, as much as I want to be upset with what Vanessa did, I kind of get it. Well, well we kind of really need a season two now. I mean, they're getting on that. Okay, they're not ending on that scene. Sorry to disturb you, Master. We need to talk. Yo! That's where they ended. Okay. All right, that was the season finale of Star Wars: The Acolyte, titled. The Acolyte. I'm doing this outro a little different because there are a lot of points that I really want to hit on. Some that had to do with the episode and more that had to do with the season as a whole. So I made sure to take some time in between to kind of gather my thoughts. I also make notes on the points that I did want to hit because this may or may not be lengthy. It just kind of depends on how much of a role I get on here. But first off, I just want to say the episode was a lot better than I expected. I was so worried that it was just going to be too rushed and that so many answers weren't, or I mean, so many questions weren't going to get answered, which unfortunately was still the case. But as I said before, it could very well be meant to do that because it was pretty much set up to have a season two. And one of the first things that I also kind of thought about when I was really thinking about this is I had to think about it for a second with this being season one and I go back to another sci-fi series that i really love and that's star trek and the series i want to hit on specifically is deep space nine because i think about how i felt when i was watching that series as a whole and how i felt with um the end of season one on that i almost felt the same as i did here as i felt like i'm just like you know there was still a lot of questions i had a lot of stuff that wasn't wrapped up but the story itself was big enough it required multiple seasons to really tell the full story and when i kind of went into that mindset and thinking about how that played out to where like for me deep space nine is easily one of the best star treks of all any star trek series there is so thinking about it in that mindset this could very well fall on that because there is really a story to be told um that's a point I'll hit on later when I go more on the series, but to focus just on the episode, holy crap, freaking Plagueis. As I said, I haven't read any of like the books, comics, or anything like that, but when you're on Star Wars fan sites, you see all the art and everything, and honestly, unless somebody comes out and tells me otherwise, I'm convinced that was Plagueis we just saw there, and what role does he play in that? And then... And that was at the beginning. Then at the end, we get Yoda. I mean, granted, even though he didn't say anything, you know, I'm sure his interest was piqued. I mean, you saw those ears rise. So 
we got Yoda and Plagueis in the same episode. How is that going to play out? And um, I will say another thing that did actually kind of disappoint me was the fact that we didn't get a confrontation between Kamir and Renestra. That was one of the things I was actually looking forward to. But I think for the sake of the episode, maybe it was okay that we didn't get that. Especially if it's if that in itself is a story that's going to get hit. Because we have no backstory on what happened between those two you know what was it that caused Kamir to leave or did he leave was he kicked out you know what 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 happened between him and Vanestra where he got that scar which I am fully convinced you know after seeing her lightsaber whip that that's what you know gave him those scars so what happened with that um another thing that actually really surprised me I was fully expecting to see Mother Coral uh play a role in this but she did not appear so again until i get some sort of confirmation i'm just going to assume that she's still alive and honestly i know that when i first saw her in uh the third episode i was just i noticed you know like how um i, I guess you could say her makeup <laughs> you know going with the actors and everything uh you know looked a lot like what i remember seeing with darth maul so i want you know i'm assuming that she's of the same species and i wonder if she plays a role in Darth Maul even um, going on, which, you know, would easily explain his hate for the Jedi outside of just your normal, uh, I'm a Sith, I hate the Jedi. He, you know, he would have some backstory for the hatred of that, you know, if she somehow had something to do with um, his upbringing and, you know, she just fed all that hate into Darth Maul, which you could see even in episode seven, um, you know, like she was doing that with May, you know, how she was just riling up may trying to get her mad and angry and everything so you know it really feels like she had her own end game you know outside of anisea which is another one that i was trying to hit you know with soul trying to justify everything he was doing you know but it's like you can't really you, i mean you really can't back what he did but in terms of when he killed anisea you can't i can't take away fault from her either because obviously he soul is not familiar with you know the witches and how they work he had no idea what he was doing all he saw was that she was evaporating after coral basically got ready to strike and was ready to start to throw down and then you just see her you know anisea start to evaporate and then you see may start to evaporate which he thought was osha though so he was probably really thinking she was in danger and you know wrongfully killed Anisea but uh, again that all could have been so much avoided if maybe Anisea had initially uh instead of just starting talking you know with her disdain about Osha being trained by an institution rather than family as she said you know maybe if she made that a follow-up point after saying she was gonna let Osha go that might have changed things a little bit but there's just so many things that just went wrong with that confrontation but man but then, when Vanestra got to Brendock and she could sense everything that had happened, so she, just by being there, learned what went down 16 years prior. And when she was in that, um, I'm guessing it was like an emergency senate meeting or something like that, and she was telling the story and then practically threw Soul under the bus. And at first, that kind of really upset me, but then I thought about it for a second, and it's like, it still doesn't necessarily feel right but you know the way things are looking you know they're looking at the jedi you know they're trying to do like this whole external review of the jedi you know you have that one senator where like i said i hated the way he uh brought up his point but you know he he made a very solid point which eventually does come to fruition uh with anakin but um outside of that point though you know it was the whole idea where they're you know they did mention that you know it was the four jedi this is what happened and you know they you know decided together to cover it up which really is not the case and as much as i always said that indara and kanaka were the ones that really were the only ones that had their hands clean and all that because i'm not really gonna fault indara for um, offing the coven because she was she was trying to save Kelnaka and at first I was thinking maybe they were just passed out maybe they died by the fire but then I did see somebody um, 
talk about how in a way it was weirdly enough and ironically enough kind of like in the movie the matrix where you know if you're plugged into the matrix but then you're unplugged before someone gets you out how that basically um you know offs you because it kills your consciousness and you know as morpheus said in there the body can't live without the mind so um in that way it felt like that was kind of like the same thing where because Indara basically forced them out that's what killed them which it's one of those things it's like it can it makes sense but at the same time it doesn't but that's something that you know i feel like you know is easy to overlook so it wasn't like she did it out of like any oh, what's the word i'm looking for like she didn't have hostile intentions she was trying to get them out of kanaka's head you know and basically basically she exercised them and that's what got them so but it was her idea to cover up the whole thing and honestly may surviving the fall which we did find out how she survived that's the point i'll get into in just a little bit but um that really threw a wrinkle in the cover-up because the whole thing was may was used basically as a scapegoat i mean she did really start the fire but we saw that it was more of an accident and she did try to get help to stop it but because of that you know they had a story to where they could do that and it's another one of those things where even though soul himself right there said that he must face the high council which showed that he was very willing to take accountability for his actions you know and dara was the one who said no basically because of the fact that you know in their minds osha had no one left you know out and she had nothing left outside of her dream of being a jedi and soul facing the high council would have taken that away you know and her whole thing was you know with everything that osha lost already why would you also take away her dream so it's another one of those things where it's like good intentions but it's kind of like that saying you know the road to hell is paved with good intentions and there was a lot of good intentions there and it led to a lot of hell so, but i want to go back to uh may's fall and how she survived that because initially when i saw that at first i'm like how in the world does that make sense but then like almost instantly i'm like well technically it's not impossible because that happened with luke you know in cloud city you know after uh he decided you know he'd rather uh you know off himself than uh you know join vader you know he ended up getting sucked into an air shaft you know into a shaft too so that's not entirely outside the realm of possibility so okay i'll i'll accept that for there um but then the other thing that i was really kind of hoping for in this episode which we kind of got but not so much was the backstory of the twins so soul basically confirmed that yes they were one person you know they're the same person split into two but i would have loved more story on not so much how but why like what was the end game for that coming for that you know i really would like more story on that but that in itself could also be something that's saved for a later season you know a lot of these things that i was really looking for answers for could easily be answered another season so but overall for the episode totally exceeded my expectations and i actually really did like it like i said outside of the parts that i didn't like which i did mention you know i think the parts that i liked um outweighed those a lot more so that's my thoughts on the finale for the season as a whole not bad i my biggest problems with it were this i think the episodes were too short there was a lot of story that i feel still needed to be told in this season and a lot of it really more involved like backstory like you know what was up with soul's past that made him so desperate to get a pattern one what was up with torben what was his backstory you know i i don't feel like he was simply just some young padawan that desperately wanted to go home that he was that impulsive i feel like that there was some sort of backstory on there but you know we really got nothing in terms of torben's backstory i would have liked a lot more for that i would have liked some more backstory for soul you know what went on with his past because i feel like that had to have had something to do with his 
desire to have a Padawan. Not necessarily just to train Osha, but to have a Padawan. You know, I feel like there's got to be some story there. Like, maybe he tried and tried, but just kept being denied. But, you know, what was it that made him so sure that he was meant to be Osha's Padawan? I feel like there's some backstory on there that should have been hit up. So, you know, that was a problem I had. Um, another problem I would say I had outside of the length of the episodes is the number of episodes. So, basically... If I was to say redo this season, you know, I would obviously add some more backstory, but I would add the, I would make the episode number at least 10. I mean, I see no reason why they have to do these in just eight episodes. I feel like they should be able to do at least, I would say 10 to 12 episodes for a season. So mix that and then the length of the episodes. I. I think the longest episode I can recall off the top of my head, not including um, the recaps and opening and closing credits, I think was maybe 38 minutes. And that to me, I feel is a little too short. I think if you just take out the length of the end credits and recaps, the episodes themselves I felt like would have been better served if at least say 55 minutes. So like 55 minutes to an hour for the episode, not including recaps, opening credits, and closing credits, but the episode itself. I feel like if you had even just say, we'll say 55 minute episodes and increase to say like 12 episodes, I feel like a lot more story could have been told, a lot more context could have been given for the reasons um, Soul and Torben made the decisions they did and even give a little more backstory on the uh, what's what I'm looking for conflict between um, you know the Jedi and um, that one particular Senate because just getting a brief uh, mention in episode six I think it was and then their brief interactions in the finale I don't really feel like told a lot of the story on why he felt the way he did and you know was it a sith influence which actually that's one thing i'm actually kind of glad because i've seen a lot of theories of a sith having infiltrated the jedi and i'm very glad that that didn't but then again who's to say it that that wasn't the case because it could be one of the senators talking with uh hell maybe even plagueis himself who knows but um but the bottom line is why did that senator feel the way he did you know i don't think it was just simply you know Oh, he just hates the Jedi. I feel like there was some sort of reason. Whether it's a justifiable reason or not, I don't know. But at least then we would know why he feels the way he feels. You know, so that's something that I feel like adding more time and more episodes, that's something that we could have got into. And another thing I would have done is episode three, where we saw the first flashback episode. I would actually make that the first episode. Like mix that with like say the opening scene of uh episode one where may first um confronts indara like make that whole scene that whole confrontation make that the end of episode one but have episode three that flashback precede that because then it's like you got the backs you, you well i won't say you have the backstory because again that was the context of the jedi which i think is okay for the start because you know we're meant to be on the jedi side so it's natural that we see their point of view of it but you know do that first and then 16 years later and then where the start of episode one was that whole thing between may and indara make that the last portion of episode one that's how i would have done it when i really think about the order of everything else i think everything else would be okay in that order um now which episodes they fall into i don't know like i would definitely feel i definitely feel like merging episode four and five would have been nice um as one episode but you know again but at least then you know when we see torben going into episode two you know i don't know if we necessarily would need a backstory on that one i don't know when we would get into the backstory but i mean have some more room for just some minor flashbacks in the episode just so we can get some more backstory on those and that's probably when I really think about it, the most I would probably change with that. Put episode three as the first part of episode one, and then 
um, May's confrontation with Endara in episode one, have that be the last bit and closing of episode one. Because then that way, it's like, you see May is already out for revenge. The episode ends with, you know, obviously Endara um, having been murdered. And then cut the credits and it's like, okay, uh, where do we go from here type of deal. So that's how I, I feel like that would have probably worked out pretty decently. Um, ooh, I got to talk about the fights and the choreography. I don't think there is a single fight in this season that I have not really enjoyed. I thought the choreography was great. The thing I loved about it is you think about, well, I don't know about anybody else, but in a way I kind of see myself feeling like the Jedi. I don't know if I would necessarily say samurai in a way, but in a way, yeah, you definitely kind of get that feeling with Ahsoka. But I love the idea that it really felt like we got like a real Eastern feel with these fights. And when I say that, you know, it's like you got a lot of the martial arts involved, which I thought was a great touch. And I'm like, why was that not done, you know, really to this level before? Because naturally, yeah, the Jedi would be that skill that they could fight hand to hand. You know, and bring out the sabers when you have to, but don't go to the sabers right away. You know, and even when the sabers were brought out, though, even I thought those were some great saber fights and everything. And I think what I love most about the saber fights is they mixed what I love about the prequel saber fights and what I loved about the original trilogy saber fights. And what I say that is I felt like that the original trilogy saber fights had a lot more substance with them. Like it felt like each move they made uh, when they were fighting like had a purpose. Whereas with the prequel trilogies, I feel like those fights were more meant to be more pleasing to the eye than actually have any meaning. And it's weird to say that because like the fight between Obi-Wan and Anakin and uh, Revenge of the Sith is probably my second favorite saber fight of all time. Though if you were to ask me if I thought that was like the most effective fight in terms of like did each move mean anything, I probably wouldn't rank it that high because I mean you look at the very beginning, as pleasing as it was, I'm like, if really in all honesty, I feel like there's more than a few moves where if any of them between Obi-Wan or Anakin, you know, like didn't even have their saber out, that saber wasn't going to hit them anyways. You know, it just felt like it was just more for Flash and everything. But what I loved about the fight between Obi-Wan and Anakin was just the story behind the fight. So that, to me, really propelled that up, you know. So it's like you had, I think you had an equal mix in this series where the fights, to me, were pleasing to the eye. But the moves all felt like they had a purpose in a way. And it wasn't just like they're wasted. And I, again, I loved like the Eastern feel I got that. Like with, even with this last fight where I was talking about, it was like a crouching tiger, hidden dragon. I think that's the term. That's something I should have looked up when I was doing my notes. But, um, but like to me, that was cool because again, that kind of fits my vision of the skill of a Jedi that they would be able to do stuff like that. And man, I tell you what, Sol and Kamir, man, they got down in in both episodes where they fought boy they got down they got down hardcore and i loved it i i loved every single fight in that even the fight between may and osha in episode eight i thought was a really nice fight and i i still love that cut where they both like kick like did that high kick and they hit each other's legs and they cut right to soul and kamir doing you know their um thing with the lightsabers that was a really cool thing Another thing that I'd like to point out about this season is the idea of it bringing up the fall of, well, I shouldn't say bringing up, but highlighting the start of the Jedi's downfall. And one of the common themes I've always seen is of, of complaints I've seen people with this uh, series having is making the Jedi out to be the bad guys. And everything like that i don't think that was the purpose at all they're showing how flawed they were and really in all honesty i i don't really see how any complaints of the jedi could be valid in this uh my opinion i should preface that and the reason i say that is because if you really look at it i mean the jedi were already being portrayed as maybe not 
you know, as solid as we thought they were starting back in the prequel trilogy. I mean, if you really look at the prequel trilogy and even the Clone Wars, now the Clone Wars is a series that I'm actually reacting to, but I've already seen some episodes on that and know, uh, you know, some of the major stories on that. And the way, like, they practically threw Ahsoka under the bus and eventually she was proven innocent, but because of what they did to her, she refused to rejoin the Order on that. So, already... And I even have a person who uh, commented on um, my episode 7 reaction and he reacted to a couple of my Clone Wars reaction. You know, I look at his attitude towards the Jedi. So even before this show, there was already a negative feeling towards the Jedi. So anyone saying that this show is trying to turn people against the Jedi, in my opinion, probably haven't really paid too much attention to the other stuff on there. But, you know, that's just because I've already seen a somewhat anti-jedi i don't want to fully call it anti-jedi but people were realizing the jedi aren't as great as we all thought they were and that was something that was hit in the movie the last jedi too where luke was even talking about it but what i appreciate what this series is doing is it's showing pretty much how and why this all started and it's all political and it's kind of like once the jedi kind of started losing sight of what their main purpose was and all that that was when things started to go downhill and that's where that one senator kind of had a point but i think he was a little well i'm not gonna say a little i would say quite off you know i don't think they were as bad as he was making them sound but um you know i think this series you know did a decent job and at least starting to highlight that again a lot more could have been done to really make that i would say a lot more clear and i think that could have been done with longer episodes as well as added episodes um but this could also be something again that may be continued into season two but i feel like that's something that should have probably been addressed more in season one to kind of really add more stakes to season two because then at least we really get you know i guess you could say the political battle that the jedi are getting into so there's that and then um speaking of political you know let's get back with vanestra on this one um i'm very curious on what exactly she's gonna tell yoda is she gonna tell him like the full truth of what actually happened or is she gonna tell him the story that she fed uh the senate which isn't a complete lie it's just she made it to where she clearly uh did not involve um you know the idea of there possibly being a sith which she technically would not know and well i don't know if she would have gotten that from soul but she doesn't really seem to have the idea that the sith are back and the only ones who even knew about the whole idea of the sith probably being back one is dead and one is training with them so any real proof of the sith re-emerging is basically gone which would explain, of course, why the Jedi would still be unaware of, you know, the Sith's re-emergence, per se. Which they really technically don't even re-emerge until um, the Phantom Menace. But, but that's also why, really, any Jedi that really gets heavily involved with this, you know, in terms of keeping the plot, um, I guess you'd say, current and complete and correct, you know, eventually all have to meet their downfall with that. So e eventually, Vanestra is probably going to have to get off. Though it does make me kind of curious on what Yoda would think about what she'd have to say. And I kind of think about it's It's kind of weird. It's almost like Vanestra is covering up the cover-up. You know, because instead of making it look like... Well, she was basically making it look like it was just all Souls doing. You know, in terms of um, offing the other Jedi. And she might... And she's probably doing that to protect May, but I feel more that she's protecting May to try to find Kamir, which I have no idea how that's going to work if Kamir wiped her memory. But again, another thing for season two, which that's something I'm okay with not having an answer with for right now. So I think basically as I'm looking over my notes real quick, um, I think I pretty much hit on most of the points that I really that really stuck out in my head so far. Um, if I'm going to rate this season on a scale of 0 to 10, 
I might put it at probably looking at a 6.5 or a 7 and mainly because I felt the episode order mixed things up a little too much you know it just felt like things kept going too much back and forth um, I don't mind the placement of the second flashback episode. I think that kind of makes sense in terms of the story and everything. But I feel like the first flashback episode should have been first. And I feel like the episode should have been longer and that there should have been more episodes. And I think that those things kind of there kind of really kind of jumbled things up for me a little bit. But when I just look at it overall, like if I was to rewatch the series again, I'd probably start three and then just work my way you know through the rest of the seasons you know as they go but um yeah i mean it was a really good ser series from what i've seen and i really hope they do get an episode two because they really are it feels like they really did write this story to be a multi-season story which i have no problem with i really feel like if you're in this industry you know and you're trying to do a series and write a series come up with that i think you have to kind of have that mindset you know, don't have the mindset of, oh, we have to get everything done in one season because if you have a very successful season and then they want you to do a season two, then it's like, oh, crap, where do we go from here? Because you put all your eggs in that one basket, whereas instead of taking the risk, you know, and it's like, you know, I would much rather that they would go about this with the mindset that they're going to have at least three seasons to tell this story you know then go in there with the mindset of we're only gonna have this one season to tell this whole story because the implications of this story is too big to be told in one season I fully believe so you have to have multiple seasons with that so you know I really hope that that was their intent to go in this with multiple seasons I just hope that you know maybe they just do a little better with the episode placement and maybe at the very least if they're still stuck with just doing eight episodes maybe they'll allow them to make some longer episodes and let's try to make it to where it just doesn't feel like i mean i will admit you know there were times where it kind of felt like a jumbled mess but you know thankfully again you just after re-watching you know and all that just kind of seeing stuff that i missed it's kind of like okay okay i kind of you know get the flow there so like I said, I think I would probably put this 6.5 or a 7 out of 10 for how much I really like this because there was a lot more about this that I liked than I disliked. And even the stuff that I disliked, I wouldn't say it was like on the level of hate. So, like I said, man, man, I'm very interested to see where this story goes and I really hope they do have a season 2. So, all that being said, I uh, thank you all for uh, sticking around for that. Hope you all uh, enjoy the reaction. Feel free to check out my other reactions to all the other episodes there, as well as some of my other Star Wars content. And uh, I will catch you all down the road.